August 22nd, 1988. Daryl Barnes and a friend were running down Plimpton Ave in the Mount Eaton section of the Bronx after getting into a fight. DB had picked up a gun that one of the other teenagers had dropped during the fight. As he ran from the fight, Officer France Jerome ordered him to stop. Officer Jerome was not in uniform that night. DB said he was at Edward L. Grant Highway before he had heard Officer Jerome's orders to stop. When he complied, he was shot twice in his back. Now, according to Officer Jerome, he ordered DB to stop because he had seen him with the gun, but DB ran down Plimpton Boulevard. During the chase, DB supposedly turned and fired at Officer Jerome. DB, who was 22 at the time, was paralyzed from the waist down, stemming from the shooting. A Bronx jury then awarded Daryl Barnes $76.4 million in damages. Lawyers familiar with those judgments said that if it wasn't overturned, it would likely be reduced to the $10, $12 million range. And the cops said that they would appeal because the cop's life was in danger. Now, what y'all think about that shit? And I thought the, look, the hood had love for DB. Man, y'all tell me. This up for Debate TV. It really hurt me when they killed Stan. Nobody knew who to shoot. We ain't even have a plan. He sold me my first gun. He held my first son. If I was with him shooting it out, bitch, we the one. I shed tears for my niggas who ain't here. They tattooed and spit that real shit to remember him, bitch. I'm that dude. Catch a op and spit on his baby daughter. I'm that rule. Right at three o'clock, as soon as he get out of school. You killed my dude. I don't give a fuck about you. I hope somebody killed you in case I never f you already know how I do, man. What's going on with y'all today, man? What is it? Wednesday? Good Wednesday. You know what I mean? Good Wednesday morning. You feel me? Check it out, though. Every day. You already know how I do. Every day, nigga. You feel me? But did this here. Um, I'm not sure what this cat's name is that inspired me doing this story. Um, I don't want to say it wrong. So after I shoot this, while I'm editing, I'm going to go check it out. And I'm going to put it right there. You feel me? Uh, it's a dude that, uh, he do a lot of post shit, you know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, it's an interview or two of Pose on his channel. It ain't Fizz, though. It's like, um, Mark Red or something like that. Like I said, I don't want to misquote his name or nothing like that. But shout out to you, my dog. You feel me? Because you inspired this. I seen his vid, and it's just a lot of pictures. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no commentary. He threw some music up. You feel me? And, um... It's a lot of pictures and whatnot, and this and that, and other, you feel me? So I just figured out those some commentary behind it because it, it, it sparked an interesting debate in my mind, you feel me? And then I saw some people commenting on it too. He put up some comments, and one was from my homeboy. Shout out to the Ghost Jackson. I see you, my dog. You still active out here, man. We looking forward to that, that project you was trying to put out, you feel me? For real, for real, man. How that's coming. But yeah, um... Them hoe-ass New York City cops, man. That was some dirty shit. You feel me? And where the love for DB at? You know what I'm saying? I thought NYC had love for DB. I hear a lot of people talk good about him, say good things about the young dude. I know people that knew that young man. You feel me? And they say good things about him. So I'm like, where the love for DB at? But we get to that. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about this judgment, though. It's a, um, the New York, what is this? New York Daily News. Put this shit up, you feel me? Cop Hayden Gunman, who was paralyzed by an NYPD officer's bullet in 1988, can't pocket a single penny of the millions he won in a police brutality lawsuit uh, the state appeals court has ruled. Now, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how long they kept that shit in court. Just so they couldn't, wouldn't have to give him shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause he, I think he got the money like 10 years later. He was awarded the money like in 1998 or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get to that, man. They say in 1998, a Bronx jury granted Daryl Barnes $76 million in damages. The largest police brutality award in city history. Um, the sum will later be knocked down to $11 million after a second trial in 2003. But the appellate division unanimously tossed the verdict in Barnes' case. Now that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? They knocked the $76 million down to $11 million. 
You know what I'm saying? Then unanimously, unanimously toss the verdict. What kind of shit is that, man? I just let you know they can do whatever they want to, man. The law, not necessarily NYCD police. The law, though. They can do whatever they. They can make a law for a law, nigga. They know you can't never outdo them. <laughs> you might beat them now, but goddamn it, fifteen minutes after you beat them with that law, they done wrote another one into effect where well, you can't do that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? And that seemed to be what they was doing to this nigga DB. That's crazy, dog. That's crazy, man. How you gonna paralyze a man from the waist down, man? Take away his livelihood and then say fuck that. We ain't giving you shit but the wheelchair. That shit crazy, dog. Um, say five members. A five-member panel ruled that Barnes ducked an obligation to testify at the second trial, which allowed him to escape questions about why a semi-automatic gun and a spent hollow point shell casing was found at his feet. He ain't got to talk. I ain't got to talk when we go to court, nigga. That's up to y'all. Y'all got to prove y'all fucking case. Like I told y'all, that just let you know that they can make a law for a law. They didn't prove their case. That's basically what they saying. The, the fucking prosecution didn't prove their case fully. But because he didn't take the stand, they said, oh, no, you duck. You ain't taking the stand so we can ask you questions we want to ask you so we ain't giving you nothing. That ain't the way the law supposed to work. You know what I'm saying? That's fucked up. You feel me? Then this is how they paint a picture of the board. You feel me? This is the last one. They, they say Barnes... A member of an anti-government 5% set. An anti-government 5% set. This in the news. This in the New York news. Now, Barnes, a member of an anti-government 5% set, was shot through the spine nearly 20 years ago after an off-duty cop, France Jerome, spotted, uh, spotted, and then the 22, spotted the 20, the then, sorry y'all, I got fucked up. Here you go. Barnes, a member of an anti-government 5% sect, was shot through the spine nearly 20 years ago after off-duty cop France Jerome spotted the then 22-year-old carrying a gun in the Mount Eden section of the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? How you paint him as a cop hater? How the fuck y'all know that? Who told y'all that? Who told y'all he hate cops or he was a member of the 5% sect that do it or hate the government or some anti gut That's crazy, dog. Y'all just putting shit on that man's name to justify the fact that y'all didn't want to give him no money for paralyzing him for life. Flat the fuck out, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, let's get off that. That's the $70 million verdict that never came to fruition. You know what I'm saying? They played that man out that money. They beat it. That's fucked up. He took a bunch of losses, dog. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of losses. Lost his goddamn legs. Lost his brother. Lost the money. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, DB. I heard he passed. If he didn't, I apologize to everybody I said flat. But I heard DB passed a while ago, man. I'm not sure if that was true or false. You know what I'm saying? If so, rest up. If not, my bad, my baby. I ain't wishing that on you. You know what I'm saying? Now, I carried it both ways, man. I hope that didn't offend nobody. And I dig this. Um... Let's talk about Richard Porter versus DB. DB versus Richard Porter, man. Where's the love, man? You know what I'm saying? I heard it was a bunch of love out in these streets for DB. Motherfuckers told me niggas love DB. DB was a good nigga. And this and that and the other. So where is his love at? You feel me? Ain't nobody showing no love for DB? Let's get into it, man. Here go a statement from the Ghost Jackson. Shout out to my dog. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, my man... I'm going to put his name right here again because I don't want to say it wrong. He inspired this video, you feel me? And that's exactly where I got this statement from the Ghost Jackson there. And it reads as such. Let me hit my weed real quick. Then I'm going to read it to y'all, okay? Excuse me. Every day, nigga, you know me. Every day. I did. It reads as such, man. Um, the Ghost Jackson wrote, I'm sure Daryl Barnes' family feel the same way about Rich having D.B. little brother killed. Your brother was a selfish snake as well. No rules in this shit. Plus, Patricia Porter is rude as hell. I had my own experience with her. Fuck her feelings. Now, what y'all think about that? I'm sure D.B. family feels some type of way about Richard Porter being glorified the way he is. And a few other people. That's just gonna remain nameless right now. We're just gonna deal with the DB situation. That's right now. I, what y'all think about that statement? I got to agree with the ghost. 
You feel me? I'm sure they feel some type of way. He was a snake ass nigga as well out here in the game, dog. You get what you give out here. That's what you niggas don't understand. You get what you give, nigga. You feel me? Now dig this here. Um, I don't know if Patricia Porter rude as hell. You know, I heard she was though, flat out. That's a rumor that I can't verify, but that I did hear. And he said he had his own personal experience with she rude as hell. You know what I'm saying? So that is what it is, my baby. Now, Ali Mo said. Daryl Barnes was the kid who got the cake smashed in his face. He was mad cool with Rich growing up. Rich got his little brother hit because he was smoking crack and beating up crackheads. He kept They kept complaining about him selling soap. Wow. And then he goes on to say, he was the same one Alpo was talking about when he said Rich killed his best friend's little brother. Now, we done been over this before on my channel. If you ain't new to my channel, I already know you know I done went over this. You know what I'm saying? But wow, he killed his best friend's little brother, huh? That would make him no better than Poe, right? Right? He killed his best friend's little brother? Man. That's some, how the fuck DB feel about that? That's why I say, how you think DB and his family felt about that shit? You know what I'm saying? Now, DB, DB been around. He know the game. He played in it. You know what I'm saying? Do you think he forgave that nigga for killing his little brother? Even if he didn't know, and even if he didn't, let's just say, even if he heard a rumor and didn't know for sure that Rich did it, do you think he forgave that nigga in his heart for killing his little brother? Let's just think about that. Do you think his family forgave that nigga in their heart? For killing their brother? Hell no, nah, nigga. The same way you niggas is out here fucking riding a wave with Rich. Tell them, oh, I can't let that go. How could you kill something you love, man? Poe ain't right. Fuck Poe. He shouldn't be out here. Man, shut the fuck up. That shit sound crazy as hell, man. You niggas know the game, and if you don't, you shouldn't be speaking on it. You feel me? Keep it real, nigga, and a lot of you niggas ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Now, check this out, man. Let's analyze this situation. Alpo knew all about the things that Richard had done in his past, right? He knew about the shit. He spoke on it. So we're clear on that. He knew about the shit he had done in the past. He knew about the lengths that Richard would go to obtain his own personal, individual success. Regardless. For himself. His own personal, individual success. You feel me? The nigga was selling dummy rocks. And this and that and other beating up fiends that was fucking with his own personal individual success. And that boy got knocked off. His best friend's little brother. Now, y'all, all y'all motherfuckers, why he couldn't just talk to him? Why he couldn't ask Rich why he, did he have the keys? He should have asked him again. Why Rich couldn't ask him to tell his little brother to stop selling dummy rocks? Why he didn't ask him to tell that nigga to stop selling, beating up my fiends? If he did, why he didn't do it again? Just the same way y'all motherfuckers ask about Poe. You feel me? Shit crazy. Shit crazy when you only looking at it from one side. You know what I'm saying? And I dig this here. Um, he killed his friend's little brother over dope and money. Right? Break it down a little further. That was over dope and money, was it not? You feel me? He fucking up my dope money. He's selling my fiends soap. Bad dope. I'm not making the money because they complain. Dope and money. The same reason you motherfuckers think he killed Rich. Over dope and money, right? So who better than who in this situation? Oh, it's just because you felt Rich's motherfucking aura, huh? You felt his spirit. You liked his smile, huh? He used to stunt. So, so he better than Paul because, man, dog. Dig this here, man. So, so let me ask you this. Was suppose if, if that man killed his best friend's little brother, amongst other things that he did, but we dealing with that. If he killed his man, is Pope supposed to convince himself that we better than that? Now y'all on the outside looking in. Am I supposed to convince myself that we better than that? Or oh, he wouldn't do that to me. 
When he do it to when he did it to a nigga little brother, he grew up with in the same apartment building for years upon years, nigga. Oh, he wouldn't do that to me. We better than that. When the evidence in my face that he fucking me over, I'm supposed to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, no, he wouldn't do that shit to me. We too cool. Come on, man. Some of y'all would have died in the streets or continue to take losses until you was a crackhead out here smoking that same shit you was trying to sell, man. With the theories y'all come up with. You feel me? Now, I did, um, um, where, like I said, what about DB? When Richard Porter is out here being glorified as the king of New York, the best thing smoking that ever came out of NYC, the god, the ghost of uh, Harlem City, you know what I'm saying, Richard Porter, he out here being, what you think they feel? I give you a minute. How you think they feel about that shit, man? Why y'all talk about he shouldn't be out here riding bikes and, and one nigga talking about he feels sorry for the Mencio family and, and, and the, the Porter family because they got to see him out here free riding bikes. Man, what? Man, how you think DB feel? When he see motherfuckers talking about all rich with this, he rich. How you think they feel, man? Cut it out, man. Cut it out, man. Um... I'm going to let y'all go, man, by saying this. Uh, people choose to see what they want to see. You feel me? Nah, nah. Often they block out the bad, the dirty misdeeds that they hero or, 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 or uh, fandom then took them to or whatnot. They'll block that shit out. The same shit that another motherfucker did that made you not like him and say you wouldn't fuck with him. I ain't gonna watch his shit. I ain't gonna talk to him. I ain't going around him here, this, here, that, and the other. That same nigga doing it. But you blocked it out because there's something about him that's cool with you, that you feel, that you connect to. You dig where I'm coming from? So on that note, we can all say that like I said, it's, it's about subjectivity. It's what you like. You know what I'm saying? Because in this situation, you can't make one sinner or a saint. You feel me? You can't make a sinner or a saint in this situation. You can say what you want, glorify who you want, but there's still people on the other end of that that know that ain't the, that know that ain't the truth, that ain't the script. You feel me? Like I say, how DB family feel when that shit going on, man? I don't know, but I think I do. O's on O, up for debate TV, and you already know who it is, my baby. And you see what you see, nigga. God bless the real, man. Where the love for DB at?